we come to today's presentation, which is going to be on an energy efficient method with dynamic GPS sampling rate for transfer mode detection and crit reconstruction. I'm Jonathan Milo, first order of this article. Today's presentation is going to be pretty standard. We're going to start with a simple problem definition to know what we're talking about. Afterwards, I'm going to present approaches and algorithm that has been typically used until now to tackle this problem. Uh, particularly trip reconstruction and transport mode detection because they can be split into two different problems. Uh, I'm going to discuss about combined approach 2, uh, which like us try to solve both of them. Uh, and finally for this section I'm going to talk about energy consumption and analyze how the impact the battery life of a mobile device. Um, afterwards, I'm going to jump to presenting our algorithms and the model that we've used to solve this uh, both problems. Uh, and we're going to discuss about experimentation setup and the result that we've had both on accuracy and energy consumption, conclusion, consumption. And finally, we're going to conclude and I'm going to show reference use in this presentation. Problem definition. Uh, in this presentation, we're going to talk about two main problems, which is, like I said, trip reconstruction and transfer mode detection. Uh, trip reconstruction is simply uh, trying to determine the segments of node crossed by someone to go from point A to point B. So if I'm showing here an example of a trip, it will simply be to determine which road did it takes to start from this point A to get to set point B. Transport mode detection, on the other end, it is to assign a transport mode to each of the segments of a trip. So basically, it will be to detect uh, whether you like to go from this point to this point. Did the person walk? Did it take a car? Did it take a bike? Uh, etc. And it's to determine for each uh, timestamp imageable the current transport mode. Uh, for those knowing, it's uh, basically the inverse problem of trip planning, where in trip planning we're trying to find a trip, where whether in this uh, situation we're trying to find uh, the answer that a trip planner would have had. Trip reconstruction. How do we actually reconstruct a trip? So current approach basically only use a fixed GPS sampling rate, which is they will have a mobile app that will sample the GPS at a fixed rate, which can be once again, 10 seconds, 60 seconds. Actually, they'll try to find the one that minimize the error for their algorithms. And once they have a GPS trace, uh, what you can do is to actually try to match each GPS reading to the nearest uh, ways, which is often based on open street maps. Uh, and if it doesn't work or produce a result that's highly unlikely, they will simply try with the second nearest ways to see if it produces a somewhat better result due to the GPS accuracy. Uh, other studies can also use Hayden Markov model, which is what they will use to determine the most likely road segment for each GPS reading. Interesting point on current approaches is that GPS sampling rates are kept low, uh, which I uh, what I mean by low is that they are all under one minutes. Uh, this is basically to avoid a problem called arc skipping as much as possible. Uh, what is arc skipping? Well, it's often uh, it's a problem that arises when you have a too big sampling rate. Let's take for example uh, this year where the a trip can start here and end here. So if we start to sample every, let's say, three minutes, maybe we'll get a sampling here and then three minutes later, a sampling here. So to get from here to there, if the person is walking, there's basically three roads where it can have a crust, um, which you can actually determine based on what the information that you have. So you need to keep your sampling rate low so that you have approximately one GPS reading for each ways on which you will cross minimally. 
Uh, so as I am explaining, yeah, this basically creates a problem where multiple paths can explain the transition between two GPS. Now for transport mode detection. Uh, to detect transport mode, machine learning is generally used and it will be based on GPS data skills, which is uh, the position and the speeds. Uh, the goal will be to classify this data among the defined and limited set of classes, which is the transport modes. So we can see that machine learning really apply to this kind of problem. Uh, we've seen uh, mo multiple type of machine learning algorithm used, such as neural network, convolutional neural network, random forest, support vector machine, etc. Uh, it has to be said that they generally achieve a good, a fairly good accuracy, higher than ninety percent. But the main problem, as with trip reconstruction, is that they rely on a high sampling rate. Uh, of GPS data, which is even higher than trip reconstruction. Uh, most of them will use a sampling rate ranging from 1 to 15 seconds interval. And most of them actually does not attempt to reconstruct the smartphone trip either. Here are some results obtained by other transport mode detection approach. Uh, I'm gonna gl glance rapidly over them due to time constraint, but the important takes on this slide is the average accuracy for each of them, which range from 80% to 94. And it's not necessarily correlated with the sampling rate as we have sampling rate of one seconds that are actually worse than sampling rate of 60 seconds or 15 seconds. Finally, we've seen the, in the literature uh, one other approach that actually tried to tackle both problem as we are. Uh, they use a con conventional GIS-based map matching, map matching algorithm to reconstruct the path and a rule-based algorithm to identify transport mode, which are walk, bicycle, bus, and car. They obtain a trip reconstruction error of 21% and a transport mode detection accuracy of 92% on average. So far, we've seen multiple approaches uh, to tackle tra trip reconstruction and transport mode detection that's, that are based on the GPS sensor of a mobiles. Uh, one thing to know though is that the GPS sensor is actually quite energy expensive. By running our home test, we've discovered that uh, with using a Samsung Galaxy S8 that its battery will only last from 8 hours to 10 on a normal daily usage with the GPS on, <clears throat> sorry, and what I mean on is not just like really uh, available for apps, but doing actual GPS sensing. Uh, in our opinion, this means that the other approach will not be usable at large scale if it kills the battery of all of the user within a day. So. Our approach will try to minimize the number of GPS readings it needs in, a, in order to preserve the battery of phones. Model and algorithm. So the approach that we will be presenting today, we wanted to tackle the trip reconstruction and transport mode detection problem with an accuracy at least as good as the related work that we've previously seen. We also wanted to reduce the energy consumption uh, because it needs to be acceptable for mass usage by multiple users. How are we going to do that? Well, it's simple. We're going to propose an approach that uses a dynamic sampling rate, which means it's going to determine for each next sampling the optimal times to do the next sampling and avoid to not waste energy. So why a dynamic sampling rate approach? Well. It is clear that uh, a fixed uh, sampling rate will not be optimal for all road uh, network configuration in which the user can evolve. Uh, if you take a dense urban area, there's a load of roads in which uh, per a person can turn and takes to go from a point A to a point B. And moreover, there's a lot of transport mode that they can take, which is walk, bus, metro, subways, 
by big C, etc. Whatever in a uh, suburban area, the there's still a lot of road, but they more how can I say they more on the less square, they will make more rectangle, which there's less um, turning in where they can go and the less transport mode in general and in the other extreme in a rural area there's really few transport mode it's basically just cars and walk and there's few road even like if you are on the highways you will probably stay on the highway for quite a while as i was saying the actual optimal sampling rate depends on manufacturer which are the underlying road network configuration and the accessible transport mode nearby that the user can take. Uh, it depends too on the schedule of the bus and the subway, on the actual stop and placement, etc. Uh, that means that having a fixed sampling rate will waste energy if the new sensing won't give you any new information on the state of the user. And on the other end, you can miss important information if a lot is happening in a short span of time, which is the arc skipping problem that I've discussed. So to achieve a dynamic sampling rate, we'll use a particle filter to estimate the smartphone state according to the reading made by the GPS. Uh, broadly, our method works as follows. First, we make a GPS reading to estimate the smartphone state S. Then we'll simulate the possible all the possible evolution of S until a time t, which is in the future. And then we'll determine a certain time that will offer an interesting compromise between the accuracy and the energy consumption. So when this specific time is reached, we'll return to one and start. So more formally, we define our problem as follow. The world, which is the underlying row network, is defined as a graph where each node is an intersection defined by its longitude and latitude, and each arc is the actual roads that link the intersection with the maximal speed allowed on it and the tra transport mode allowed on it too. Uh, we search for the sequence of node and transport modes P, where P is defined as follow, where each and M tuples uh, rep represent uh, the, transfer, the transport mode used to reach each and node. Uh, the state of the smartphone is defined as follows. We have P, which is the current position, M, the current transport mode, V, its velocity, and P, its path travel until this moment. However, the smartphone state S is not directly observable, but we can just estimate it from an external sensor, which is the GPS in our case. So the state position uh, is expressed as a Gaussian distribution given by the X, which is the GPS coordinate projected on the nearest arc, and the uncertainty is the accuracy of the GPS. And the evolution of this position over a time interval is given by this formula here, which is basically just uh, the position plus the velocity with a little bit of uncertainty on it because it can vary, vary during this interval of time due to traffic, lights. We then approximate the belief state of our models by a set of particles con constructed by the control data UT, which is the delta time since the last GPS reading, and the sensor data ZT, which is the GPS reading. Here's the algorithm used, which is the particle filter algorithm. Here's a visual representation of our particle filter algorithm for one transport mode, car. At the beginning, with t equal 1, this smartphone stain is pretty certain, so we don't need a lot of particle. But at t equals 10, we start to need more particle because there's more states. And at t equal 30, we need a lot more of particle, and we can see the uncertainty of the position here. And there's multiple position actually that can be explained by multiple path difference. What we next, we need to decide when we'll do a particle resampling in the particle filter. To achieve this, we use the score function, which is defined as follow. The score function has two main parts. First, we, uh, we take the accuracy that a particle would add if it is the true state, which is defined as the difference between its path and the paths of all of its neighboring particle, which 
with it could be mistaken. If we go back to uh, the visual presentation, this is this situation here where a particle could uh, come from this part of this part of the road network. The second part is the energy consumption that the re GPS reading would have if it is made at time t, which is a sigmoid function that's been flipped on the y axis. We have the lambda parameter that allow, how, allow us to control how much importance is given to the energy consumption. Here's the graph obtained by for the score function with different lambda parameter for the precedent example shown. Once we have the score function, we can do the resampling at time that has the maximal arguments for score xt. In this uh, situation, the resampling will have been done at roughly 44 seconds for lambda integral at 0 0.05 and 0 0.07, and it will have been done at roughly 20 seconds for lambda equal 0 0.3. Uh, when we do the resampling, the particle in a radius of two times the uncertainty of the GPS is simply keep instead of generating new particle. The weight of each particle is then updated according to this distance from the GPS sensing. To handle change of transport, we can do that only at special node for everything that's transit related, uh, like bus stops or subway station. For walk to car, which can happen virtually anywhere, but which could, would lead to a combinatorial explosion, we, just, uh, we only do that this transition during the uh, resampling. We made our test in the greater Montreal area by recording our daily trips with an Android app on a Asus Sun phone for Max. Uh, we made sure that all trips were collected at different time of the day and have actually different path too. Uh, here's a breakdown of our actual data for the test. Here's the result we had with our approach and our dataset. With a lambda of 0 0.01, we had a better average accuracy than the related work, but with a lower sampling rate, which means that we actually saved more energy. Regarding energy consumption, most other approaches use an average sampling rate of 1 second, which give in the end a cons an energy consumption of 336 milliwatts, uh, which gives them an accuracy ranging from 84 to 94%. Uh, our approach has a average sampling rate of 20 seconds, which is transcribed to an energy consumption of 286 for an accuracy of 96.3%. This means that we have a 15 energy consumption reduction for 3.3% higher accuracy and a 37.5 energy consumption reduction for an equivalent accuracy to related work. It is also worth mentioning that on lower average sample rate, we can update an accuracy of 85%, which is an, a reduction of 56% of energy consumption for an equivalent accuracy compared to the Article 9. This concludes our presentation for today. Uh, we've been a little bit fast on the result due to time constraint, but of course there's more detail on the actual published paper. So in conclusion, using a particle filter, we achieve a better accuracy for a lower energy consumption on the transport mode detection and trip reconstruction problems. Uh, we could improve, in our opinion, the accuracy of our approach with a better transportation model if we actually take, took into consideration elevation data, better traffic data, or if we actually considered stop and lights.